Hello, I'm Justin and I'm going to be speaking about pyruvate oxidation. The part of the cell in which pyruvate oxidation occurs is in the mitochondrial matrix. The enzyme that catalyzes all of the reactions in pyruvate oxidation is known as pyruvate dehydrogenase. Although it is one of the most shortest phases in comparison to the other pathways, pyruvate oxidation is highly important because it is the link that connects glycolysis to the Krebs cycle. Without this phase, the two pyruvate molecules produced from glycolysis are unable to be transferred to the Krebs cycle. Each of the two pyruvate molecules formed in glycolysis experience pyruvate oxidation. So keep in mind that the process that I'm about to explain occurs twice per glucose molecule. Before starting, you must make sure that oxygen is present, because if it's not, the 2-pyruvate form will experience fermentation instead. The first step of pyruvate oxidation is a decarboxylation reaction. This consists of the removal of a carboxyl group, which therefore produces carbon dioxide. This in fact is one-third of the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. In this second step, the two carbon molecule left from step one is converted into an acetyl group. Two electrons and protons are also transferred to NAD plus to form NADH as well as a hydrogen ion. In our third and final step, the acetyl group formed in step two reacts with coenzyme A to form our final product of acetyl-CoA. Coenzyme A is especially cool because it acts as a carrier of acetyl groups to the Krebs cycle. This was my explanation of the steps involved in pyruvate oxidation. Thank you for listening. Created using Powtoon.